out of the oven and into your heart. Welcome to I Hope You Suffer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real tagline. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say it. You'll never taste it so good. <laughs> uh, the end of your heart makes no sense, and I love it. Yeah. That, it does make sense. I mean, you love yeah. it, so it's in your heart. I guess. Ginger Dead Man, always in our hearts. R.I.P. Never forgotten. Uh, you at the crossroads. <laughs> Whatever it is, I think you overcooked it. On the contrary, I baked up just fine. <laughs> the hell is that? Well, it sure ain't the Pillsbury fucking dope boy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> welcome to episode sixty-three of I Hope You Suffer. My name is Shemp. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm Damn, Hunter. It's supposed to be Hunter, <laughs> or was it Presley? Presley. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's how tired I am. I forgot the fucking joke. <laughs> Wait, did you say shunt? What did you shimp? say? My dad wanted to name me shimp, shimp like one of the three shimp. stooges. <laughs> what does shimp mean? It was the, one of the stooges that replaced Curly. That's oh the only thing God. I know that name from. But That rules. Yeah. I could have been a shimp. Oh my, my God. It's my middle name. I also think so that's... I still got it. That's what, like... <laughs> Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi refer to as like oh, I forget I, I want to say it's maybe like like extras in movies they call them shimps I can't remember that is hilarious um yeah so we watched 2005's The Ginger Dead Man cause <laughs> we're dumb we're and dumb. hate ourselves <laughs> Cause Christmas time is here. I hope you suffer, but why? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, as I said, like before, like I like this movie. Like I've seen it before, and I remembered being like, I remember being like, oh, I like this movie. I did not today. I had never seen it before, actually, and I thought it was kind of boring. Had you seen it before, Kit? Yeah, but it was a it was a late night thing, and I I just remember like the bits and pieces, like the dude violently biting into oh my uh, the ginger dead man's head, and <laughs> I that have... was about it. <laughs> this is one of those movies for me that I like knew by reputation. Like I'd always heard of it, but I had never actually seen it. So maybe it I just thought it was I don't know. It's better. I don't. It's not. I don't think it's a bad movie. I just was not in the headspace for it today. So I was just like, I, I, as I was watching it, I was just like, God damn it. How is this hour, Ted, but it's taking me almost three hours to get through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was short. And at like at least 15 minutes of it is credits. <laughs> uh, I've gotten to get so excited <gasps> seeing like, oh, 70 minutes. Like, yes. Thank you. Yeah. I tried to like uh, fast forward through the credits because I was like, surely there's gonna be something, but the one time there wasn't. <laughs> yeah. What? The... Well, it's because I missed <coughs> after the credit scenes one time, and now for the rest of my life, I'm just gonna be watching these stupid credits. You missed the best after the credit scene. <laughs> I know. I won't let it happen again. Um. All right. So before we get into that, just. A reminder, because I think this is maybe no, I guess sleigh bells. You said something about it, but uh, we have a Tales from the Crypt bonus episode on Bandcamp right now. Uh, I think it's I hope you suffer podcast dot bandcamp dot com. Uh, go buy it; it's good. It's real good. Uh, we don't have our almost names in it. <laughs> 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 the, the only downside to that episode. Yes. Let's all just legally get our names changed. Okay. No. <laughs> I 
I, I will not be Presley. I feel like if you were a Presley, you would have just grown up to just be like a, a greaser. <laughs> um. All right. So this movie was directed by Charles Band, and I think produced by as well. So it is a full moon production. Um. Quality, if ever there were one. It's it's weird. Full Moon like has a bunch of movies I enjoy, and then there's just a bunch of like. But then they do shit like this and like Puppet Master and stuff, where they make like one, one maybe two of them that I'm like, okay, these are pretty good. And then there's like fucking fourteen sequels that follow it. <laughs> uh, it was written by William Butler and Dominic Muir, uh, starring Gary Busey. As Millard Findelmeyer and the Ginger <laughs> Dead Man. <laughs> uh, I really liked the cover on Tubi because it was like him on the it. regular. Yeah, it was like the regular. You know, the one on IMDb is just like Ginger Dead Man with like a knife in front of a fireplace, but it had like Gary Busey's face, and he's just like making this crazy face, and it was pretty funny. We need to do more Gary Busey movies, <laughs> guys. What do you think Millard Findelmeyer's almost name was? <laughs> I mean, obvi- definitely like Jason, something super normal. What? <laughs> it's like David, like. Um, it also stars Robin Sidney as Sarah Lee. <sighs> uh, also. Played Diane in Night of the Living Dead 3D reanimation. <laughs> so, I you texted us that before I watched this, so I don't think I would have recognized her, except for at the end she has her hair down and she looks exactly like, like I would have recognized her then, but just the way that she had her hair and she was like really southern yeah. sounding. But what a weird connection! Didn't see that movie coming back. She's in a lot of stuff, so I feel like she will probably pop up on this podcast periodically now. Now that like now we know like who she is, because I feel like I mean I would have never picked that movie out if we hadn't done it, like in her IMDb. She was in a movie this year called Ouija's Halloween Night. Yeah, I think that's another (laughs) full moon movie. (laughs) Um, also stars Ryan Locke. As Amos Cadbury and Larry Cedar as Jimmy Dean. <laughs> Every, uh-huh. I, okay, so my first thing with this fucking movie is I'm angry that there's no sort of backstory for Gary Busey's character and that when he becomes the cookie, it's immediately food puns. <laughs> Yeah, that is kind of weird. <laughs> like, I was like, they should have at least had him have been... It's like a baker. Yeah, or something. Been like, ah, oh, my bakery's going under, so I gotta rob this fucking Cadillac Jacks. <laughs> yeah, I was confused in the beginning, because for some reason I thought that, like, Sarah and her family run the restaurant, so then when she's, like, in a bakery, I was like, does the rest like I don't know that was like a confusing connection for me until like the like maybe last 15 minutes of this movie I thought the bakery was called Belly's Bakery it does look like it because like I could like this, this is one of those movies that got put up on streaming but it's still like the quality of when it was like released in 2005 so it kind of looks like shit in HD and hard to read anything in the background yeah uh, all right, so this opens with Millard uh, robbing a diner, and he like some old man that you eventually you find out it's uh, Sarah's dad, and then her brother with her. Uh, the dad gets up and tries to stop this robbery because he's like, "This ain't right," and Millard just shoots him immediately. <laughs> And then her brother gets up and just tells Miller to put the gun down a million times. Mm -hmm. 
And so Millard, like, puts the gun on, like, the counter table. And he's like, all right, well, he's like, go ahead, son, you take it. And as he's, like, he reaches out to grab it, Millard, like, shoves his head down into the, like, the counter and just stabs him in the back, like, 50 times. Classic Millard. Uh, Yeah, it's pretty sweet, actually. He calls that the Millard Maneuver. That's how he robs (laughs) everywhere. (laughs) Seems like a lot of work when you have a gun. (laughs) Um, Sarah's like, like kind of gets up after this, after like hiding under the booth and he gives her some kind of advice about like, anytime you go anywhere to find something safe and like, he starts, I don't know, arguing with his mom in his head, which yeah, this part I feel was so weird. like wasn't supposed to be in the movie and was just Gary Busey doing that in real life. Well, he's like, my. I thought he said something like, my brother told me to finish what I started, but my mother said not to hurt women. or I, I don't know. I was like, what is happening right now? He just pulls out his book of Buseyisms. He's just <laughs> reading those. I, was, I think that was just like a real life moment that they just caught on camera and used in the movie. I think so. Uh, but he shoots her. And him saying, here, kitty, kitty, to her, oh which was God, disgusting. Creepy. <laughs> he shoots her in the leg or something, and then it goes into the opening credits. Um, no EDM this time. Yeah. Boo. <laughs> Could have had some fucking Skrillex in there. Charles. The Band. music was really goofy though to be fair that's charles band is like the low rent john carpenter and all of his movies he makes has he does all of the music for and it's all pretty much like that the subtitles called it suspenseful brassy music yeah there was one of them that was like mocking tone music or some shit i wrote that (laughs) it it said mocking piano music i laughed so hard Um, so after the credits, you cut to Betty's Bakery, where Sarah works, and it's essentially like her family bakery that her and her mom had to take over after her dad and brother were killed. Uh, she's working at night, talking to pictures of her dad and her brother, because I think it was like the maybe one year anniversary it was her brother's birthday. Oh, that yeah, oh, yeah. Because she, she's <laughs> talking about how she hopes there's strippers in heaven. Yeah, the like later on the one like she's talking to the one dude and he was like, she's like, it's his twenty first birthday. He wanted to go to a titty bar. Yeah, and, and he's like, like who could blame sister. him? Yeah, right. big dreams. Yes. Well, dream yeah. big, kids. Also, that he has to wait till he's 21, when I'm pretty sure you could go into stripper or uh, strip clubs at 18. Also, like, didn't this happen, like, two years ago? So, he was, like, already 19. So, like, anyways. Law, a flawed logic in this movie already. Um, you see, like, some... For some the one thing. For some fucking reason... She has like newspaper clippings in her workplace of <laughs> Millard getting caught and then one of his like execution, which seems like you're never going to get over any of this if you just constantly are looking at them. Uh, Why not have it right over your like, you know, <laughs> rolling dough? Gets it like tattooed like, on her totally forearm. normal. Yeah, right. Uh, while she's kind of like lamenting all this shit, there's a knock at the back door, which scares her. Well, she goes and answers it, and it's a box of Grandma's gingerbread seasoning that was dropped off. She sees, like, a cloaked person walking away, which <laughs> normal, getting your deliveries at, like, 9 p.m. by... A person in a cloak? Yeah. She says to herself, she's like, calm down, Sarah, it's just a delivery person. And I'm like, in a cloak? <laughs> that doesn't seem right. New UPS uniform. <laughs> Pretty sweet. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Um, and you are introduced to the best character in this movie, Brick. <laughs> which obviously got his almost name. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Brick is like delivering all of this fucking crazy dialogue that includes, I've got two tickets to tonight's Wrestlepalooza. Yes. 
<laughs> They're even going to let amateurs compete tonight. A mosh pit of tag team damage and body slammage. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, obviously written by someone who hasn't seen wrestling in like a decade and a half at this like in 2005 <laughs> I don't know there's plenty of body slammage I like that's I I feel like that's the type of like shit that would have been used to actually promote like a pay per view in like 1980 oh yeah um he is who who fuck? What was his name? Who was the Dudley? Butcher Baker. No, what was the du- what? who was the Dudley that was like the real skinny one, kid? Spike. Spike. That's about the body type this dude has. That he is also a wrestler. That he calls yes. himself the Butcher Baker. <laughs> I which I don't really get, but uh, he's Katie. Okay. <laughs> you what? Google it. Okay. Yeah, Google, Is that a real person? Google Spike Dudley. <laughs> Googling sounds intensify. <laughs> Katie's gonna become uh, like addicted to like '90s wrestling now. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen like any wrestling thing ever. You're missing. Yeah. Out. I wish it just was this guy. <laughs> Honestly, I wish the whole movie was just the Dudleys. Yes. <laughs> uh, just the Dudleys versus Gary Busey. No actual characters. Just that as a movie. Can you imagine them like three Ding the tiny little gingerbread man <laughs> through a table? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Why isn't that a real movie? It has to happen. More I'm gonna movies. will it into existence. More horror movies with wrestlers in it, please. Um, so, I don't know, Brick's talking about going to this fucking wrestling thing and kind of hinting that he wants Sarah to go with him. Um, so my note is Sarah doesn't give a fuck about anything Brick is saying. And she starts talking about how today should have been her brother's birthday, and this is when she says he would have wanted to spend it at the titty bar. Her words, exactly. All right, E. R.I.P. to a real one. <laughs> <laughs> Knows how to party. She's, a, she, she's looking like pretty fondly about it too. Like she had just talked about like <laughs> a happy memory they shared or some he shit. He used to tell me all the time that he wanted to go to the titty bar. <laughs> all he ever wanted. As they're talking, the worst thing in this entire fucking movie happens. <laughs> Which is Brick is like working on something. It cuts his hand and they decide to have him hold it over all of the flour and seasoning for the gingerbread (laughs) cookies they're making because they are sanitary. I was like pretty big uh, health code V here. Like like, he has to move a solid three feet over to hold his hand over this fucking bucket full of everything they're working on. It is the dumbest, dumbest way to get like into the like the reasoning the ginger dead man happens <laughs> it also just made like every time you see like the dough where it's just got like red in it i'm just like Ugh. yeah it's pretty gross i also just like don't understand like i don't know whatever it's so weird uh sums up the movie I also just realized that I was writing GB for gingerbread. Well, he's ginger dead, but gingerbread man the whole time, and that also stands for Gary Busey. So, uh, I, was, I just kept Perfect. doing GDM because I didn't want to write down ginger dead man for all of my notes. <laughs> um, GDM new music style, Gary dance music. <laughs> just, it's just EDM with Gary Busey quotes <laughs> over it. Yes, <laughs> Gary Busey sounds. <laughs> 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 I would listen to that. Um, yes, same. Make it happen. Someone out there. <laughs> I feel like there's not a chance there's not a video on YouTube already of some sort of dance music with just like Gary Busey lines <laughs> over it. I'm looking it up. There has to be. There's, there's like shit like that for almost every sort of anything. Or at least, like at the most, there's one of those like auto tuned videos of like Gary Busey in a movie, probably. Um. Uh- 
What? The first thing that came up, Gary Busey loves anim- anime. Oh. Don't really know that what that is. Makes sense. I'm con- I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Sarah's like, oh, let's get you to the hospital to get you stitches. And he's like, the butcher baker doesn't get stitches and just fucking like <laughs> refuses to get his arm looked at. and just continues to make dough with his fucking bloody arm. I appreciate that he refuses to break kayfabe. Yes. <laughs> Good on him. Oh god, I wish this was a wrestling movie so bad now. I want to see <laughs> I need to see like the side plot of him going to wrestle at Wrestlepalooza. Uh <laughs> like having the ginger dead man like try and stab him up through the mat, like trying to kill him in all these different ways <laughs> while he's like, wrestling. That square thing probably falls out of the mat and he just climbs out. But it's like <laughs> just the size of like the ginger dead man. <laughs> All right, we need to write the next one. Or it's just like he's got a fucking like Undertaker entrance thing where just all the lights go out and just come back up, and he's like in the ring. <laughs> um, I wonder how like we could probably just talk about this like the rest of the th- like the episode. And Katie would just be like, I don't know what's happening. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> right, Katie. This is a wrestling episode now. Okay, explain <laughs> wrestling to me. Yeah. <laughs> is it real? Uh, kind of. It's real and it's machines. I mean, it happens. Yeah. In a it, physical space. It exists. Did you say it happens? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it I'm is, convinced. It is a thing that exists in the universe. You know what I just realized? I mean, are you going to tell me that Orange Cassidy isn't really fighting people? With his, I would never. With his hands in his pockets the whole time? It was the fucking greatest thing of all time. <laughs> Bro. I don't... <laughs> I'm just like nodding. Even though nobody could see you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, all right. So, Brick goes back to work because toxic toxic masculinity is on his side. He refuses to admit he's hurt. <laughs> uh, Julia, another character in this movie that is just there for reasons, um, is out front celebrating that Millard was put to death after going to the chair and that he was cremated and his ashes were sent to his mother in Coonborough. Which the fuck? seems racist in some way. Um, <laughs> Probably exists, though. So, I... I, I all I could... I, that tells me that this execution happened extremely recently... If it's in the paper now. Yeah. And it. I mean. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Like it, 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 it kind of. She. Yeah. She kind of made it seem like. Uh, it was like news to them. Like they didn't know. Which I feel like. They definitely would have. If she wasn't she the one that like got him. Caught. For the crimes. I think so. You, I mean. And they don't go into the guy a was lot. On, Right, and then the guy was on trial for, like, two years, and then he was executed. That's, like, insane, but... I yep. feel like it's got to be extremely easy to, like, catch Gary... Somebody that looks like Gary Busey for robbing oh, places. So... <laughs> so was the... Right, for real. So was the person in the cloak supposed to be his mom? Yes. Okay, I, like, literally am just putting that together now. Because I was, like... So Julia is like, ah, oh my God, he was electrocuted. And then she's like, oh, they sent his ashes to his mom. Isn't that gross? And I was like, why is that gross? And then I just yeah, figured out that pretty... seems pretty normal. But then I just yeah. realized the reason she said it was because the mom had the ashes and the mom put the ashes in the gingerbread spice. Yeah. Got Ten it. Ten. Which more reason not to eat I'm... gingerbread cookies. I mean, gingerbread's gross anyways, but... Agree. Um... That silences everyone yelling at us that we don't like eggnog or gingerbread. Gingerbread. <laughs> 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 I'm so taken aback. Like, what? There was, like, a... <laughs> 
a no. poll on Twitter yes. sometime this week about like what's the best cookie, and everyone was voting oatmeal raisin, and I was just like, what is wrong with oh. all of you old people? Oh, I do like oatmeal raisin though, but I over voted for chocolate chip. Yeah, you know, over like Snickerdoodle I voted or Snickerdoodle. chocolate chip cookie yeah. or like no, no. Oatmeal I don't even raisin what... is like what you eat when there's no other option. Even then, like <laughs> then I would pick that over. <laughs> Starved to death. I don't hand. I don't like gingerbread, and I don't like just, like, normal sugar cookies, so I would pick oatmeal raisin over either of those, but... I'm going with Kit's idea. Oatmeal raisin over sugar? I would cut yeah. my hand off and put it in the oven and cook it and eat that as a cookie instead. Do it. Well, I mean, I don't need to right now, but... <laughs> if somebody was just like... episode coming up. Yeah. <laughs> just do, like, a Facebook Live video. It's gonna be... It's about to get real hard to edit video with one hand <laughs> i'll just have to get it down so i don't have to edit it uh, okay no one ever say anything <laughs> off topic again uh, i mean i'll just leave that in i don't care about that <laughs> uh so they're like julia and sarah talking about all this shit with millard being put to death and it cuts to the back where brick is monologuing his wrestling speech in a mirror you ass is juiced. Uh, also extremely eighties. Um, he... I hate I hate having a case of toast ass. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It happens to everybody. You know. Who whom amongst us hasn't suffered from toast ass? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brick continuing to work on these cookies goes and puts. The bloody seasoning into the bread mixer. Damn it! <laughs> well, like, how do they not notice that? First of all, people who are eating at this—that's why they don't have any business I was about at to this say, bakery. There's a because people are getting out of sick. Business. They're just fucking giving people some sort of food poisoning, fucking constantly. Um, it's gross. You cut back to like this dough being mixed a bunch of times. It's just got all these like red streaks in it, and it makes me want to die. Yeah, it's really gross. Um, Seems it, pretty taste. Up your iron intake. <sighs> at, some, at some point... Well, I imagine the milk meat, sh meat shake has, like, an irony taste to it. Because it's got so much, like, you know... Meat. Well, raw, well, it's, like, medium, I'll raw... Say, what we didn't like, say is it's all raw meat. Yeah, pretty much. I used to work at a warehouse that carried all of the roast beef that Arby's uses, and it is real gross. Ew. Um, it's in this like big frozen ball that or it's like a no thing. i like arby's don't tell me anymore <laughs> <laughs> it's in like the size of a brick that, that when they cook it it just like shrinks down into this like ball of roast beef it's weird and gross oh yeah uh, i can imagine the smell <laughs> <laughs> i mean i don't like roast beef to begin with but yeah it Working with food is the worst. Yeah. Um, I assume it's the same where, like, if you work with TVs all the time, you just hate them. TVs are the worst, yeah. <laughs> they, got a real, yeah. they got a real particular you, smell you about them. stop wanting to eat TVs. <laughs> <laughs> Very unappetizing after you load 100 TVs into people's cars. <laughs> Um, I don't, I don't know. There's shit where Sarah's yelling at people because she's the worst boss. Um, Betty. Nobody hits a diamond cutter. Yeah. This movie would be much better if Diamond Dallas Page just ran through and fucking diamond cut somebody and left. Yes. I don't, I don't know what that means, but I agree. Well, you will when we watch, uh... <laughs> ready to rumble wcw's halloween havoc 98 <laughs> we're like katie watch this movie this is the fucking pay-per-view <laughs> is he in ready to rumble yep he's like, like the main bad be. guy he does a diamond cutter in there i guarantee it katie have you seen should... um devil's rejects Yes. Diamond Dallas Page is one of like the bounty hunters in that movie. Not That's that, like, so weird. You, I forgot about that. Well, maybe you probably won't even remember either of their characters, but I don't. I'm gonna Google him. He looks pretty terrible. 
Oh. Can't successfully oh. yoga program though. Yeah, everybody swears by it, but it's I see him yoga rehab. It's uh, I like his little vest with like the lightning <clears throat> on it. Uh, yes. <laughs> best vest. Uh, all I remember from watching WCW is when him and like, um, was it Dennis Rodman? And there was yep. a Carl Malone. Who was, or was it both? Uh, he he was with Carl Malone, and then Dennis Rodman was with uh, Hulk Hogan. God, wrestling was so awesome in the nineties. I think it was Here's... Bash at the Beach. I don't remember. Here's a headline that says Diamond Dave Dallas Page comments on David Arquette's return to wrestling. Remember when David Arquette won like the fucking world championship belt? I absolutely remember when WCW. Our... David Arquette won the <laughs> our championship. The champion in our hearts still. Uh, what was it? Eight Legged Freaks that you guys did? Yes. Yep. I had no idea. I knew who David Arquette was, obviously, but I had no idea that he was like into wrestling or wrestled or like anything at all. I've never seen anything about it. And then when you guys like opened that episode talking about <laughs> it, I was like, oh, David Arquette, just like that. And I was like, wait, is this the same person? And I had to like look it up and my mind was blown. You should watch his death match where he gets his fucking neck sliced open. <laughs> oh. God. It's pretty rough. <laughs> um, David Arquette, come on the podcast. Please. We stand. Hard, we hard stand. Um, Wow, look at that picture of him, and he's just wearing, like, leather short shorts. Who? David Arquette. <laughs> oh. I was like, please say not Diamond Dallas Page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyways. Um, let's just turn this into a wrestling pay-per-view review. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just have, like, Katie being like, I don't know what any of this is. <laughs> Um, so Betty is introduced, who is Sarah's mom, who is drinking and shooting a shotgun at the bakery or chain across the street or whatever the fuck a restaurant, whatever the fuck it's supposed to be. But she is. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can't really like read the banner, so you just kind of have to piece it together. Well, it's like they come, they keep bitching that it's like trying to put them out of business. But then when Jimmy's like introduced, he keeps saying it's like a restaurant. And I'm like, it's that's not really competition for a bakery. People aren't no. coming to a bakery to sit down and just eat a loaf of bread. I am. I'm trying. Yeah, to you don't know. Way. I mean, I'll sit down and eat a loaf of bread. But I'm going to do it at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, even though Betty is like, <laughs> three-fourths into a bottle of Jack Daniels. She's able to shoot this shotgun from across the street just enough to shoot this banner half down. Uh, Pretty good shot. Um, Sarah comes out and, like, stops her from doing all this shit, and Julia is going to give her a ride home. Uh, You cut back in where Brick is turning off the mixer... And a tiny hand comes out of the bloody dough. Uh, yeah, like how? For why? Yeah, I don't know. It's weird because it's not like he's... He's not baked. ...in the shape of a cookie yet. Yeah, it's just like a baby hand. Bloody <laughs> So <laughs> they're, baby they're putting fucking hand. babies into this. <laughs> yeah, this was a separate batch. Yeah. This was the baby dough. <laughs> the baby batter. Baby dead man. Ooh. Trademark, I hope you suffer. I'm writing it down. <laughs> uh, and you cut like back outside where Jimmy Dean pulls up, not talking about sausage. I wish he was a sausage. That would be awesome. That would have been a way weirder movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he yells at Sarah about his banner being shot down and says he wants to buy the bakery for $50,000. Um, he introduces his daughter Lorna, aka Miss Pretty Face of Waco. <laughs> Very long and unruly title. <laughs> um, and they just have like I don't want to see the rest of the faces of Waco. Yeah, same. Cause... it's a it's a weird town. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. They're still reeling over that bombing earlier. Um, 
Yeah, they're just like arguing about him wanting to buy this bakery. And she keeps saying no. Um, they like they eventually like part and she goes back inside and she's talking to Brick about really wanting to sell the bakery because it's gonna go under anyway. So I don't know what the big deal is. Take that fifty K and leave. Uh Brick like while talking to her, they just like I don't know, like again asks her to go to wrestle a palooza with him. And she's like, Go home. You're fired. <laughs> Quit hitting on me. <laughs> uh and then she goes into the back and starts making gingerbread men with the splotchiest dough I have ever seen. Yeah, first of all, <laughs> well that dough looks so gross. Also, she makes gingerbread man. Yeah. She makes one. <laughs> Just one with that gigantic cookie cutter. Oh, it's so awesome. Like, first off, the dough, it's like nothing's mixed in. No. It's just like half brown and half white, but just spread throughout. Like, she's obviously never seen it, gingerbread dough it before. It looks like tie-dye dough. It's gross. And then she, tie dough. She pulls out a cookie cutter that's like the size of a torso. Like a human It's like torso. a baby, yeah. <laughs> it's really strange. Basically spent all of, like, the last two hours making one giant cookie. <laughs> that they then put into the biggest oven I've ever seen. Yeah, it's almost more like a, like, uh, pottery kiln. It's freaking huge. Oh, like, I was gonna say, so, like, is... Is this, like, a thing that, like, an a Do ovens like this exist that people cook with? Uh, like I mean, I've never... for pizzas, but that, that's the only thing that I can think of that's remotely that large. Yeah, it I don't really. Seems extremely dangerous. <laughs> it's like for it, it's not a real like I I don't know what it is that they actually use, but no, I don't think it's a real. Was... It's like a it's like an entire room. Yeah, it's a sauna basically that they're cooking cookies in. Yeah, that sounds it's like pretty tight. <laughs> just getting in the sauna and having a cookie when you're done. I mean, <laughs> ooh. I mean, maybe maybe they do exist. I've never seen one that looked like that, but it's weird and seems dangerous because once you like, it's just like getting locked into a freezer. Like, <laughs> that's yeah. probably not gonna be good for you. A hard stance against room sized ovens. Yes. Yeah. I'll. Yeah. Um. So Sarah puts this fucking toddler-sized cookie in this giant oven. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a weird electrical glitch. So she goes looking for Julia. And for some reason, Lorna is walking around inside the fucking bakery. And happens like as she comes across Lorna, she also sees a rat in there and knows that Lorna put it in there. <laughs> And Lorna says that the 50000 her dad wants to offer for the bakery is too much for her. And they just start fighting after Sarah hits her in the face with a pie. <laughs> Classic move. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of fight, stumble their way through the bakery and hit like a circuit breaker, which sends a bolt into the oven because science. Mm -hmm. And it brings the... Brings millard back to life as a gingerbread cookie like like catching him on fire somehow but then he's just like i'm alive <laughs> this is like the strangest confluence of events required to get this dough man alive right so let's break down this idea that like the his mom <laughs> has this idea of using black magic to bring him back to life as a gingerbread cookie because it's in the spice. Right. So she has to, I mean, to, like if it's the electricity that does it like Frankenstein, how does she play that into like, how does she factor that into her plan? Right. It's like, I don't know. It's like, I don't even think this was her plan. All, I think she just wanted to feed them his ashes. <laughs> you know, like, probably, because, like, the chances that she's like, all right, I have this recipe to bring my son back from the dead as a cookie. So first, I need to drop his ashes off, mixed with spiced gingerbread. Hope that they make gingerbread cookies and not just 
like a round ass cookie, then someone has to bleed <laughs> profusely into the stuff awesome. by cutting themselves with a box cutter. <laughs> then they have to put it into a then then they have to make it a big giant ass cookie because like imagine if he was the size of just a regular gingerbread cookie. <laughs> Then it has to go into a huge ass oven that catches on fire and gets electrocuted. Like, there's no way. <laughs> Seems just, pretty reasonable I just to me. I desperately wish this movie was just about like a chocolate chip cookie. It just <laughs> was rolling around trying to kill people. If a tire can do it, a cookie can do it. True. <laughs> so, uh, eventually, Amos shows up. And, and uh, not go. Sarah like knows him, but do, what, do we even know like how they know each other? She's just like, "Oh, Amos," and I was like, "Who the fuck is this?" Yeah, she says something later on about how like they've known each other since they were kids, but like, or she like I think uh, I don't know if I have I gotta have it somewhere in my notes. It's it's explained later. We'll get to it. Um, Lorna and Amos are dating. Amos is. Extremely famous. early two thousands. <laughs> I'm super mad his name isn't famous Amos. <laughs> Even though you know exactly that's what they were going for. Yes. And then and then Cadbury. Yeah, his last name's Cadbury. Um They like he stops them from fighting and like they they go to open the oven door for a reason I don't remember, but Lorna sees a uh, ginger dead man through like the window and freaks out. They open it and he escapes. They're like all like freaked out by whatever is happening with this fucking cookie. And Amos is like, what? <laughs> Amos is like, as like, he just like the ginger dead man comes out and like, confronts them and Amos is like what the fuck are you and he's like well I sure ain't the Pillsbury fucking dough boy <laughs> <laughs> immediately the food puns begin for some reason Sarah you gotta. Sarah's like I know that voice but I can't tell from where um, uh, eventually like I don't know they're kind of like there's a bunch of shit of them just being like, what the fuck's going on? Amos thinks Brick is playing a, quote, big funny ha-ha on them. <laughs> Amos is hey, as you do. to be the ass end of a big funny ha-ha. He is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing his fucking shorts that... His, they're like tight, tight-ish shorts. They're not super baggy, but they still go down to like mid-calf with like three chain wallet chains on and... <laughs> A uh, like tank top that says "pull my finger." Yes, <laughs> <laughs> perfect. A perfect. He has like a weird perfect. earring or something too. I think. Well, he's got a pretty sick eyebrow ring. He's like like what oh, a corn okay. fan looked like in two thousand. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. But like a but like an adult. Like he's no longer a high schooler. He's like an adult, but <laughs> he like won't let go. Forty five in this. <laughs> Uh, Lorna thinks it's black magic, which technically true, and tells some extremely stupid story about using a Ouija board. Yeah, I was like, her reasoning <laughs> for knowing that it's black magic is so freaking weird. She's like, I used this board and it's spelled out, and she's like, it told me the story about this guy who was like cutting up pieces of people and like mailing them, blah blah blah. And Amos is like, the Ouija board spelled out that entire story to you, <laughs> right? <laughs> was there for a while yeah um (laughs) amos's plan is to grab the ginger dead man and take him on leno or letterman to get famous you know solid plan yeah um the like the three of them go like back into kind of like the the back room of this bakery to find the ginger dead man and they follow a bunch of eating noises to a refrigerator <laughs> <laughs> where like an entire jug of milk is <clears throat> thrown out of to show that he is going buck wild in there um they they go to like lock him in this refrigerator but he escapes before they do sarah tries to call the police but the phone line is obviously dead 
So Lorda pulls out her cell phone and calls her dad instead of the police, which also the police are not going to do anything about this based on any other movie I've ever seen. <laughs> also, real life. Um, like, I really, like, this is the one time I wanted one of those scenes where, like, somebody calls the police and has to explain what's happening, but it's the most, like, illogical story of all time. Where it's like, this cookie came to life and is attacking us. Uh, at this point, Betty shows back up. And is, like, walking around the store and sees a rat. And then is immediately, <laughs> immediately confronted by Ginger Deadman. And, like, she's like, I recognize that voice. And he cuts off her finger and asks her if he's, she's ever tried a lady finger before. <laughs> God damn it. I like that one. You would. <laughs> um, like, that... I think it cut kind of like after that happens, like you cut to something else, but at some point Julia shows back up and like finds finds Betty like lying in like a what I can only describe as like one of those like <clears throat> hospital like laundry hampers that they wheel around. Yeah, that's uh, what yeah. it looked like to me too. Which I I don't know why they have that, but okay. You get all that blood though. Yes. <laughs> But she's like lying in it, holding her hand, and Julia's like, "What the fuck is going on?" And Ginger Dead Man comes up behind her, just bashes her in the head with a pan, and says, "That's gonna leave a mark." <laughs> um, she wasn't even trying on that yeah, one. Yeah, that's like the worst line in the movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> Amos goes outside to his car and gets a gun, and comes back in as like the ginger dead man has cut off the electricity to the building and Amos comes in with his gun and he says I want to see this fucker when I blast him to crumbs <laughs> they, Amos is trying harder at this point they all are <laughs> extremely quick to just be like yes this is a cookie that came to life I, I appreciate how quickly they buy into the idea yes. honestly again not breaking kayfabe <laughs> um <laughs> At this point, Jimmy Dean has showed up and is just, like, talking to himself outside for, like, five minutes. Incredible <laughs> sentence. <laughs> um, he's, like, mad that he sees Amos' car there, too, and he's just, like, talking to himself about his daughter dating Amos and some shit. And you come back inside where Amos and Sarah are going to try and, like, get the power turned back on, and this is when... They're, like, flirting, and they talk about how they went to, like, a birthday party together when they were six that Amos doesn't remember at first. Right. Um, so, like, I'm, my assumption is that they probably, like, went to school together or something, but, like, Amos was obviously the extra cool kid that didn't know a super nerdy Sarah Lee. <laughs> the, the, the scene is, like, really weird because, like, first of all, there's a black magic ginger man running around and they just like just like stand around for a long time black magic they're... ginger bread man is the greatest <laughs> sentence of all time <laughs> and they're like having this weird heart to heart about yeah and she's like being real sincere and she's like you tried to kiss me near the punch bowl and i gave you a bloody nose or whatever and they're like flirting and i'm like Fix the generator! What are you doing? People are getting killed! And you guys are just, like, standing there fucking around. But one of my favorite things is, like, he... Sarah's like, oh, so, Lorna, you guys are dating or whatever? And he's like, no, nah, she pays for my beer and my pizza, blah, blah, blah. And he's talking about how Lorna doesn't have emotions, and he says she's colder than a Mud Creek catfish. <laughs> oh, God. True, though. Yes. They're very it's, cold. It goes on for like 10 minutes, and then finally they're <laughs> like, let's go check the generator. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically, they like can't get this generator working, and you cut to the best scene of the movie, which is Jimmy <laughs> outside, and is just kind of talking to himself or whatever, and his car turns on, and the ginger dead man is using a rolling pin to hit the gas pedal <laughs> of his car. <laughs> It just drives his fucking car and crushes Jimmy between the car and a wall. 
legendary. Pretty awesome. Um, you, when you go back inside, Amos notices like a trail of blood as Lorna and Sarah are arguing. And they follow it to find Julia in a freezer covered in whipped cream and cherries for nipples. <laughs> yeah, what a weird thing. Ginger dead. I did a double take. <laughs> I was like, what? It's so weird, and like, I feel like that would take so long to do. With his little <clears throat> gingerbread nubs. Yeah, and like, how many cans of whipped cream was that? And how much shaking are My you doing of those cans? A lot. <laughs> I feel like after that alone, you'd be like, all right, I got to take a break for a night. <laughs> um, Lorna at this point is just like, fuck this. I'm leaving. It goes outside to wait for dad, finds him crushed in between a car and a wall. And it's just like, oh no, like just, you can't go blah, blah, blah. And then just steals his ring. <laughs> this is a weird. <laughs> uh, Sarah tells Amos that she thinks like the ginger dead man is Millard and they like pull like as like after they've they pulled Julia like out of this freezer and they've covered her in a blanket I'm assuming still covered in whipped cream um and they're <laughs> they're just kind of like watching over Julia and just I don't know talking about Sarah's dreams and aspirations of going to nursing classes um, at some point while they're talking, they like kiss. Yeah, because he's like, <laughs> Why do you want to be a nurse? You could be a doctor or surgeon. She's like, Man, that's so hunky. So and then romantic. they make out. You she know. She kisses him and then she apologizes. And Amos is like, Says, Sure, sure beats a punch to the nose. <laughs> I suppose I that's know. true. I mean,. Depends. Depends on who you're kissing, I guess. <laughs> uh, Lorna comes back into the store and, <laughs> like, just walks in and just Ginger Dead Man immediately is like, how about a facial and cuts her in the face? <laughs> this is, like, one of my favorite parts because, like, not only is that funny, she, like, runs in there and she's like, ah, my face, my face, but, like, doesn't say anything about the fact that her father is dead. Is just like concerned about the fact that yeah, her face she's got cut. Miss Pretty Face of Waco. Miss Pretty Face. Yeah. Uh, it's also, there's no like cut. It's just like a streak of blood on her face. Yeah. Then Amos is like, it's fine. And she's like, no, it's not. You're ugly. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, what ugly. the heck? <laughs> um, <laughs> you also get a scene of the ginger dead man threatening to fight a rat that's in the room. Yeah, like, <laughs> what I wish. I GB shit talks a rat. I just wish the whole movie was. <laughs> it's like, I'll kick your rat ass. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there was like a rat in the recording booth, and that's just again more real life dialogue that happened that they just added to the movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's Gary Busey threatening to fight rats. Uh. Again, Lorna gets like pissed off and like that they're they don't care that her face got cut and she goes to leave and trips a wire and gets a knife to the forehead. Yeah, that was a surprise. So uh, along everything else that's happened, the ginger dead man has booby trapped the store somehow. <laughs> <laughs> he is extremely prolific for like the couple hours he's been alive. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that he's like two feet tall somehow. And a cookie that doesn't have any muscle mass to lift stuff. Um, at this point, Sarah's like fed up and she just yells for the ginger dead man to come out and get her as Amos is just firing wildly into the dark with his gun. Mm -hmm. uh, they come across Betty's cut off finger and for some reason they're just like, I think it's pointing at something. <laughs> like, which is a very weird conclusion to jump to but I guess technically they were right and it's pointing to the oven that Betty has been thrown in so who knows how long she's been in this oven but she just has some fucking black marks on her face and they, answer, they eventually get in and pull her out as the ginger dead man locks Sarah in the oven and hits Amos in the head um 
Sarah's like locked in the oven for what I guess is like a minute before like <laughs> Amos comes to and she gets out and like crawls over to Amos and now the ginger dead man has Amos's gun. It's just like, oh, this is sweet and bunch of nonsense happens where Brick eventually shows up and the ginger dead man just starts like <laughs> shooting at everybody after Brick starts talking about wrestling. <laughs> he like is pretty good at dodging bullets because he shoots at him like ten times. I mean, he's got and he's fine. He's got stormtrooper aim and like just can't hit anybody from like two feet away. Yeah. Um, also, I feel like that gun would just knock him like five feet back on the <laughs> ground because it's the size like. How of is him. he even holding it? He's got like little cookie arms yeah, and <laughs> no fingers and like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, as he's doing this, Julia shows like just like a back to being fine and just like mm-hmm. bashes ginger dead man with a frying pan where and then brick grabs him and holds him down and eats his head after the ginger <laughs> dead man says eat me you punk bitch That's so <laughs> and he goes so gross. Your finger is no one's bitch it is gross because he's like full of blood i guess yeah uh, it's i guess super brick's gross. blood probably but yeah that's true <laughs> Like, your bee gets done, and his mouth is just covered in blood. And then he's just he goes, downing half a gallon of milk afterwards. He, like, burps, and he goes, Got milk? Uh, I hate it. <laughs> and Julia is, like, totally turned on by it somehow. Way into it. It's all of the worst. Everything about it's the worst. Um, but, so now, essentially, the, like, Millard is inside Brick. Um, <laughs> Brick, Brick's face is also this is how evil, evil blood magic works, right? Yes, I apparently like... I think Brick is also now a cookie somehow. <laughs> yeah, he's like he's like a weird possessed like cookie person. He, demon. He literally looks like the beginning of Evil Dead Two when like Ash gets possessed. Yes. <laughs> um. Oof. Yeah, so, like, they all go to leave, but, like, Sarah runs back in to get Brick. Brick is now, like, this weird possessed cookie thing. (laughs) Uh, And he, like, grabs her and licks her face. And Amos comes in and, like, stops Brick from attacking Sarah. And, like, shoots Brick in the chest a couple times, which have no effect on him. And then Julia runs in and just pushes Brick into an oven. Which is stupid, because Sarah's like, I'm done being scared of you, but then Julia's the one that just, like, rushes into him. Yeah. Like, mm, he didn't really do anything. Uh, so, like, Brick... I'm done being scared. Julia, get him. <laughs> right? Brick, Brick is just, like, pushing this oven and dies. And then you, it cuts to uh, some indeterminate amount of time later, because Sarah's hair is, like, twice as long as it was, and she's having some sort of bake sale for the hospital with some nurses and Amos and Sarah are a couple now and some kids walk up and ask for gingerbread cookies and she's like fuck no and the nurses are like oh that's fine some lady just came by dropped off some and uh it's I I don't know why these fucking nurses think that's a good idea to give to kids some fucking strange cookies somebody dropped off right but that's you see these gingerbread cookies that all have weird eyes, and then it's... They have, like, googly eyes, and the nurse goes, couldn't, couldn't you just die? Oh, I wonder where that's going. End of movie. And then Sarah becomes a mortician. Yes. A very terrible one. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. That's what they should They should have just, like, just tied that, and it just named her Sarah. That's why she starts doing it with dead people yes this is she just (laughs) all checks out (laughs) um the end i mean i like this movie i just had a rough time with it today i'd say watch it yeah it was fine it's definitely slower than i remember it being like there's not enough gary Busey in it but it it's totally worth it to hear Gary Busey threatening a rat to see his <laughs> yeah. tiny little gingerbread man. I'm really interested to watch the sequels because I'm hoping he is just it. Like I hope it focuses on him more than like just the other people because everyone else in the movie sucks. 
Yeah, I guess my, like, issue with it, if I were to say I had one, is that, like, I definitely thought a lot more people would die. And, like, I mean, you, yeah, really, you don't really see him that much. Nobody, and you just, like, hear him making noises no, in the background. Nobody but Jibby, and then I guess Brick. And uh, Lorna. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, she gets the knife to the forehead. But, yeah, those are kind of just, like... I mean, I guess there's not that many characters in it, so, like, I don't know what I was expecting. I, I just was expecting it to be more, like, thanks killing, I guess. More I don't know. puppets. <laughs> no, Way not... more puppets. <laughs> more rap. Gary <laughs> um, just doing rat. a ginger dead man rap. Oh, man, just fucking... I need ginger dead man versus turkey from thanks killing now. Right? Um, does anybody got any news? I said I've been busy and haven't been able to look at like anything. Nothing yeah, that same. I think is important. <laughs> uh, all right. I know, like, say Kit and I are both like dying at this time of the year. So, um, do you guys have any shout-outs you want to do? Hmm. I started watching, I think that this was on AMC, so I think originally it was on Shudder, but you can watch it on Hulu now, the show Nosferatu, uh, and it's spelled N-O-S, the letter 4, the letter A, and then 2, like a license plate, Nosferatu, and it's based on a book of the same name by Joe Hill, which I read the book, and I really liked it, and it's like really thematic because like... I don't want to give away too much of the plot, but basically it's like this man that steals children and takes them to Christmas land. So there's a lot of like Christmas themes in it and there's like whatever. So I decided that I would watch the show and I'm only like a couple episodes in. I'm not like super loving it because it's like almost nothing like the book, which like I get it. It's a TV show, but I'm going to finish it. I know it got renewed for a second season, so I'm going to kind of just see where this season goes, but I definitely recommend reading the book if you're into, like, it, you know, wanting to read something. I, I actually read this during the summer, so it was kind of weird because I'm, like, I'm very, like, keep holidays in the season, so it was, like, weird for me to be reading about Christmas in the summertime, but the book is really good. So, again, that's by Joe Hill, so go read that. That's my recommendation. All right, you got anything, Kit? Uh, I'm going to say... Tammy and the T-Rex. Oh, did you finally get that? I, I haven't gotten to watch it yet, oh. but Vinegar Syndrome just released it this past weekend, and it looks insane. I'm waiting on them to ship my copy, and I cannot wait. <laughs> I like, I want, I want that so bad. <laughs> yes, it it looks incredible. <laughs> <laughs> um, mine is for people that hate themselves, and... Sweet, I'm in. <laughs> You've already seen it. Go watch The Fanatic. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> I still need if to If you want to watch the most bonkers fucking performance you've ever seen. Good god. Uh, it is really something. It's, it's, it's a film where decisions were made, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> um, well, it is a yeah, movie gonna... directed by Fred Durst. Sorry, John Travolta, who is essentially playing a doing what he I think he I feel like he watched the movie Rain Man and was like I could do this better <laughs> and like then apparently I think Courtney may have tweeted at me that he dedicated it like to his son which is extremely cool. terrible <laughs> oh it was a uh... Shane Shane said it was dedicated to Bill Paxton no but I, th oh, I think that's right. I think like I feel like it was Courtney that texted or tweeted it at me. I think he talked about how like he like John Travolta dedicated like his performance oh, his in the performance. movie to his son, which who's like his son oh, had like no. mental disabilities too, so it's even worse. Oh, I missed that part. But isn't it like a stalker? Like, so is it it's, based it's on? A, it's it's a stalker movie, but like John Travolta's character is like mentally disabled, so oh. he doesn't realize he's stalking. So it's worse. Like, I, I think the movie could have been good if they would have made a legit stalker movie, right? As opposed to this weird fucking 
Like, I guarantee you John Travolta took this role where he was just like, I'm going to win a fucking Oscar for this. He's like, I'm so brave. Ugh, girl, no. And just... <laughs> it's... If, if Speaking of... Uh, hold, I was go ahead. finish it up real quick. If you were into watching just fucking extremely weird shit that is not good, but, like, you can't stop watching, watch The Fanatic. It's... Fred Durst even put in a royal part where, like, this actor is with his son, and he's, like, puts on music, and he's like... This is like this is Limp Biscuit. This is the fucking real good shit, and it's like rocking out. <laughs> no, with his he kid. Yes. doesn't. <laughs> yes. Oh my! I can. Oh my god. Okay. Anyway. Wow. Yeah. Did you think that he thinks his music is good? Of course he does. Oh, absolutely, he does. Uh, hmm. What were you gonna say, Katie? Oh, so speaking of, uh, I have a face-off connection with Nicolas Cage. I don't know if they did this on purpose because, like, this came out in 2005, so this was... I'm not really sure when people found out. So you remember um, the movie The Frozen Ground about that serial killer, Robert Hansen, that Nicolas Cage is in? Yeah, I watched it. Right. His serial killer name was The Butcher Baker. (laughs) So I don't know if they did that on purpose because I'm not... I mean, the serial killers from, like, the 70s and 80s, but I don't know that he was, yeah, like, like I, prevalent. There's there's just, like, a thing in, like, movies and TV shows that, like, they just feel like wrestling. Like, again, this was 2005. This is when people didn't necessarily have, like, gimmicks like this type of shit anymore, but they all just think, like, in the 80s, it would be, like extremely gimmicky nonsense and like TV shows and movies would add like Butcher 2 or like The Mangler or some fucking nonsense so okay I think, so maybe it's a coincidence yeah I think it was just that he's a baker and they tried to do something like alliterative with his name right well that's okay because we got a Nick Cage connection so there you go <laughs> <laughs> uh, so next week we are watching the Will Ferrell movie Elf <laughs> Uh, no, we're watching, was it The Elf on Amazon Prime? Yeah, The Elf from 2017. Um, I can't imagine this is going to be good. There's no way. Even, no, I don't know anything about it other than the title. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I might have a hard time standing it's, up to these other masterpieces that be we've our, been watching. It's punishment but... leading to Shark Jaws. That's right. Santa, Santa. Santa Jaws, whatever that fucking movie's called. <laughs> <laughs> He's good. I would watch Shark Jaws for the record. I, mean, I, absolutely. I would too. I would too. Um, so yeah, watch The Elf if you watch along. Um, other than that, leave us a rating or review on iTunes. Oh, yep. You can follow us on Twitter at I Hope You Suffer and Instagram at I Hope You Suffer Podcast. You can listen to Kit's other podcast, Riff Raff, over on the Toilet of Hell website. I'm like three weeks behind and it makes me sad. I'm missing <laughs> all of the Mortal Kombat talk, I assume. Some quality content. I'm just going to have to sit like one day and listen to it on like my laptop or some shit. Um, like Leeb. Yeah. Pretend I'm going to do some housework and then just sit on the couch and listen to it. <laughs> uh, you can follow Katie on Instagram at Werewolf Face. You're doing something for December? Yeah, I'm basically just doing another post challenge like I did in August and like I did for. Or like I used to do for October. So I'm just going to try and post something every day. It's just going to be. That's like Christmas related. A different. But not drawing of a shark with a santa hat on every day yeah different angles you should just start different different sharks just start like taking like write down other stupid ideas we have on this show and then just draw those for a month oh i don't (laughs) i I specifically (laughs) don't write some of them down so just do do like an entire month of kit and i creating wrestling gimmicks Okay. Yes. Well, I did write Baby Dead Man, so... Oh, my God. Please draw Baby Dead Man. And I also <laughs> wrote down Shimp. <laughs> my life would be so much different if my name was Shimp. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm thinking what? Um, 
And you can listen to my other podcast, Let Me Be Your Pot of Love, about the VH1 reality shows in the mid-2000s. Um, the episode that dropped, I think, right before this one will drop. Kit's going to be on. Then we're going to go record, like, right after this. Yeah. Um, other than that, I got nothing. Um, watch the elf. I hope you suffer, but why? Reaching <laughs> your ass is toast. Uh, something about facials. <laughs> <laughs>